There is a wealth of equipment available to machine shops to enable them to make their employees' jobs easier. I've got a pretty extreme example here today at Hostrider Industries in Marshfield, Wisconsin. What we have here is technology that enables Tia Burtz, a legally blind young lady who works in the QC department here, to go from legally blind to perfect 2020 vision. My name is Tia Burtz, and I am a quality control technician at Hostrider Industries. I was born in South Korea and adopted at 17 months and my family lives here in Marshfield, Wisconsin. I was diagnosed with optic nerve hypoplasia. With optic nerve hypoplasia, the vision condition involves the optic nerves being too short and under development. So it's kind of like this, you have a server and client on a network. The server is great and the client computers are great, but when the guys were doing the wiring, they skimped and didn't wire it correctly. So even though the two ends of the system are great, communication is horrible because the connecting device is bad. Yeah, so we, uh, we found out about Tia really through a per personal connection. Uh, we knew her from church for years. Uh, so when she was going to school down in Janesville in high school, she got interested in 3D printing. Uh, she ended up getting her own 3D printer. Uh, you know, she was, um, she was making CAD models in Tinkercad at the time, because it was a free CAD software, um, printing out parts. So she was getting this interest in manufacturing. And so what we did was say, hey, like, come see our shop. Come see, you know, real you know, manufacturing in action. So when, uh, when we brought her on as an intern, uh, you know, we had to walk through you know, what is it that you can see? What is it that, you know, what is it in the environment? You know, I can't put on glasses and just see what she can see. You know, there's a cord going across the floor. Well, we just walk over it. We see it in our peripheral in, you know, 2020. Um, so really, it was just having a conversation and walking through what a position would look like on a daily basis and what are the hindrances that could get in the way of doing that work, whether it's safety related or efficiency related and then just taking proactive steps to either remove those obstacles or get that accessibility technology so that she could do the position. When I started interning here, they had me do stuff like draw models up in SolidWorks and draw prints up in SolidWorks as well for the machinist. Being um, a machine shop, you know, there wasn't enough work to just do CAD modeling where we're at right now. Uh, and so, you know, she, she expressed interest in uh, the metrology and inspection side of things. Um, and so then we were able to kind of roadmap saying, okay, if we did bring her on full time, we just needed to figure out what would be the spread of responsibilities for her. And so that was not just the cab modeling and, the, and making 2D prints, but also uh, doing the inspection, uh, learning the CMM, Right now, I work mainly in the quality control department. I do inspection with hand tools and a vision system and our CMM. I also still draw up CAD models and prints and I work with our information technology systems as well. During my internship, the guys kept talking about going to IMTS, the International Manufacturing technology show. Kylan was talking to me about some exhibitors there. Out of the blue, he asks me if I've ever tried virtual reality. Uh, in uh, one of the booths, they had um, essentially a digital twin where they're able to put on VR goggles and actually see the factory. And actually, you could use the, um, the, the VR setup to actually like do assembly within it. So Tia has to get about two inches from a computer screen to be able to see it. And what was interesting is when she put the VR goggles on, well, what are the VR goggles? It's two inches from your face to be able to see a real environment. I fumble around for a little bit and I ended up bumping into the real world table at one point. But other than that, I did really well and the person at the booth was amazed. You know, the thought occurred to me, well, if she can see in VR goggles in a VR environment in a way that she can't see in the physical world, what if there were VR goggles that have a camera on it and instead of you know, feeding in virtual environment, it would feed in the real world? So New Eyes is an accessibility company based out of California and what they've done is they've taken a pre-existing virtual reality headset on the market 
and develop specific software to help BDI people. And how it works is the virtual reality headset already has a camera on it and they have the software that uses the camera so you can zoom in on things and change the contrast and even use optical character recognition. When I tried the goggles out for a demo the first time, I was blown away and I could see things that I didn't even notice before and I was able to read signs at the other side of the room. It was pretty amazing. I use the goggles almost every day, mainly if I'm trying to read a thread mic or if I'm trying to look at a print that has really small dimensions on it. So some of the big accessibility technology for TIA were the VR goggles, uh, digital, uh, digital mics, calipers, etc. Uh, because you know she can't see an analog measuring tool. But with a digital, uh, she can actually get it close enough to be able to see a digital readout. One of the other big things was just getting touch screens. Like when we're sitting at a screen this far away, we can see where the mouse is, right? Well, you have to be this close to see the screen. Well, where's the mouse? And you know, it's so observing, like you know, she'd be trying to wheel around and find the mouse. And so those are just little things that you don't think of until you actually observe and communicate with, with the individual. Right now, I mainly work with hand tools and the vision system to inspect parts. I'm working on the CMM and eventually I'm planning on moving to second shift to run all the quality department and become the metrology person for our second shift machinists. As of current, there is no standard for accessibility in machine shops. You kind of have to outsource it and go with trial and error. Eventually, I want to create a standard much like ISO or AS9100, but it's tailored toward accessibility. So how it will work is there is a standardization for accessibility for different types of disabilities. I'm mainly working on the BVI standard, and that will ensure that someone who wants to work at a machine shop who's visually impaired can work for, with confidence if they find out said shop is certified with this new standard. Some advice I would offer to manufacturers hiring visually impaired employees, I would say get to know your employee, get to know what they can and can't see, ask questions and get information, research different technologies that could help them and work with them to see their capabilities. You know, manufacturing really is all about what you can do and achieve, right? Because you have to make a product, right? There isn't a whole lot of conceptualness to that. Either you can make a product or you can't. Either you can expect, inspect a product or can't. And, you know, really it just comes down to the fact that she's able to do it and she loves doing it. And, you know, when all of us as individuals are contributing to the success of the company, to the success of each other as team members, um, you know, that's just what creates a really awesome environment. So there you have it. Clearly, Hofstrader Industries has invested in their equipment, they've invested in a brand new facility, but they're also investing in their employees. And so while this is an extreme case, there are many other ways to invest in your employees. That way, investing in your company and getting the ROI you need on both equipment and your people.